I'm Carly Steele here at South by Southwest in partnership with Kino Lime, talking to some of the festival's top storytellers all about their filmmaking process and how they broke into the industry. Let's make movies together. So thank you for taking some time out of your busy South by Southwest schedule to chat with us. Tell everyone what brings you to the festival this year. Oh my god, I'm so excited to be here. Um, what brings us here is Hail Mary, yes. a feature that I directed that we shot in Mexico, um, starring Jack Houston, um, Angela Serafian, Natalia Del Riego, and Benny Emanuel, and a bunch of amazing actors that we shot with a full Mexican crew. Karina Millen and I, the producer, went down. The script is by Nate Lee. And we went down, the two of us, to Mexico, not even really speaking Spanish, but like just hiring a full Mexican crew so we could keep it like completely authentic. Yeah. Truly, I wanted people to cover my ass. I didn't want to be like the American that goes down and tries to like bring all the Americans down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was, we spoke the language of the heart, and it, it was an amazingly beautiful experience and one that I hope, I think, translates when people watch the movie. I love Jack. I've actually been in a movie with Jack. You He's have? Awesome. I know Angela. She was in um, my friend Mike Metafoy's movie, The Promise. Angela's She's an angel. extraordinary, so that's an awesome cast. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about the process of this movie from script to screen. How did it get started? Well, like, How did you come upon this story? Well, Karina, the producer, Karina Miller, she sent it to my agency, so I got it through my agent, and it was somewhere around like April, May, after the pandemic, like after we shut down. And so I kind of had enough time, like a few weeks, to be thinking about work, Yeah. because I was stepping back from it and thinking, wow, what is it that I really want to, who do I want to work with, what do I want to do? And then we Zoomed, and we really liked each other, and I was like, she lives like literally five minutes from me in LA. So I was like, you know what? Let's just social distance walk. Let's just see if we like each other before we decide to like make a movie. And and we did. We kind of fell for each other. We just kept walking and working on the script and Nate with Nate and just getting ready. And we'd sit on Google and Nate in um, Karina's office and we'd be on Google and like just randomly looking at locations because it's sort of a road movie too it's all over mexico so you know we would find some crazy stuff and then go down and scout it and boom then we we finished shooting about a year ago i always feel like it's just always a miracle every a miracle. movie that gets made there, there's a, a lot of things need to happen to make it happen well this movie basically is like two years which is really a miracle to have something happen that quickly that's great by the way, guys, in, in movie world, that's quick. It's, really, it's fast, really fast, and it's really because of Karina and Talal and their company, Spark yeah. House, and Abe. Like, they just kept pushing it forward. And well, I'm all about the work, so I'm ready to dive in. Girl after my own heart. <laughs> uh, what was it about this story that really attracted you, and you're, you wanted to tell this story in yeah. a visual medium? Yeah. Well, well what attracted... Because I get a lot of scripts that I read, yeah. and because I... Do a lot of television too that has like you know Walking Dead or Peacemaker like genre stuff too. Yeah. I get a lot of different things, but for me, this was that fit that box that I love. But it also has a heart, and it really I hate the word message because it makes it, it's not a message movie, but it's a kind of movie that after you watch it, you're like, wow, it it's saying think. something. Right. It's sort of, you know, in the vein of, of just a, a genre movie that has a social context, yeah. and that's my heart. It's like, I, I feel like I'm a director who likes to take, tell stories about the underdog. Mm -hmm. And so if there's an underdog or someone that doesn't have their voice heard in society, I want to give them a voice. Doesn't mean I'm like, you know, translating a big message, but I want to give them a voice and tell their story, and that's what this does. How do you find your scripts like is it through all different ways is it always pitching through agents or how do you source like material all that you want to tell those stories all different ways I mean I write also my yes. first two movies I wrote yes. and directed so I'm always writing and during the pandemic I wrote a script also awesome. called gated that I'm hoping gets made next um, but yeah that's good <laughs> praying always to the movie gods um, but yeah they just come through I mean through people I really try to make time and just, I'm just grateful for where I'm at, so I really try to be 
generous and give back to people. So if somebody wants me to read something, I do my best to read yeah. everything. And a lot comes from my agents and or books or things that I just the universe puts in front of me. Right. All I'm just open. Yeah. So however it comes, it comes. There's there's definitely a lack of transparency in Hollywood. I think for any aspiring screenwriters as to how things get made. It's a general sort of you need to network, you need to get to know people, you need to build community. But for people who really are maybe shy or maybe having a hard time or struggling with that but are creating great work, um, I think something like Kino Lime is really cool because it democratizes that experience and gives transparency. Right. How cool is it, do you think, that people can vote on screenplays? By the way, I want to submit some of mine. And, and I vote. know, congratulations. Is, 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 is that cool that you can, you can vote on them and then see like what actual audiences want to get made? Like, Is that something that would be appealing to you if you saw something that was getting really upvoted, then that would get to the top of the pile and, and get in your sort of domain? It would be great. Domain. Oh, absolutely. That would be helpful. Because I'm not going to lie, Like, even though I'm like, oh, I'm open and I'll read everything. Yeah. I do, but I may not make it through it's everything. It's a limited amount of time. Well, I may not make it through. Yeah. So I will give it 10 to 20 pages. Right. And then if it's really not for me, I'm really just going to be honest, it's not for me. And yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. But I think that's amazing. Yeah. You know, because there's a thing where I think people, it is a hustle. And it's always a hustle. It doesn't matter where you're at. It's a hustle. And I think that, especially as women, it's like, you know, even today, like yeah. I find expressing a voice on social media is different than expressing a voice yeah. in your career. Yes. It's very different. Very different. And so I think that lots of times we don't feel entitled to express that voice because women are so much put in boxes still yeah. about being too aggressive yeah. or she's a bitch. Bossy, that still exists. Bossy, pushy. It still exists. Yeah. And sadly, it still exists. Demanding, difficult, diva. But the truth is, like, if I want something and I'm going to ask for it or be direct with somebody or keep, I'm not an asshole. Yeah. So I'm not going to be one just because I'm asking for something that I feel... I deserve or I'm entitled to. So I think that took me a long time to sort of realize Figure. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it, it makes 100% sense. Yeah. How did you get your first screenplay sold then? Was it one that you made yourself? Or did you sell your first? Just go on. No, go on. Let's I didn't it. sell anything. Let's first, The first thing was like I had only done some experimental shorts. Yeah. And I sent it all. Richard, I was is the way to go, York. by the way. Oh, yeah. No, you have yeah. to. Look, if you want to direct or make something, Shorts. there's, like, no excuses. Yeah. Like, you have to take your phone and go make a movie. Yeah. There's, like, I have no patience yeah. for people that want to direct and haven't directed anything. There's no excuse anymore. However, having said that, I, I had made some experimental shorts, and at the time, I wanted to shoot film. I didn't want to shoot digitally. Right. So I'm like, all right. I need some money for film, yeah. and I don't. If I'm gonna spend money on a short, I might as well make a feature. That's how I thought about right. it. So I had my script, and I sent it all everyone in New York that yeah. would read it. And it was like this dark indie movie. And it was like 20 years ago. Nobody gave a crap about a female director, That's female true. writer. Like literally, the, the, the was door. Real. It was real the back then. Was real. And so. I literally took eight years and saved up my own money. I stopped working in film. I like went to work in corporate America, saved every penny, kept a little book, literally a notebook, next to my bed. Every paycheck got written in. Somebody told me if you save $100,000, which it took me eight years to save, you can get a film in the can. Not enough for post, but get it shot. Right. Got that money. I also, well, I. To be honest, I didn't save all that money because I went to Florida where my parents lived. Yeah. My dad and I were crossing the street. We got hit by a car, oh and that God. was literally a stupid indie story. But like, I got like forty-eight thousand dollars for that. We're so not I literally that. Uh, <laughs> no, just, but just so but I know. literally that was the rest. Like I saved like sixty <laughs> something. All these and then inspiring I like directors. Dude, gonna, like, don't do that. Go don't out of like the four hundred five. <laughs> no, don't do it because you might die and never make your movie. <laughs> but I mean, over. you know, I it did happen to me, and that was like the last check. That was like, okay, I have a hundred thousand. Let's go make so a movie. It in yourself. I had to. Nobody was going to invest yeah. in me. And I was like, if I don't make a movie, I'm going to kill myself. 
that. So I'm glad I mean, that I know that's how bad way was divine intervention maybe didn't feel like that at the time, but it well, was a little out. knee surgery, yeah. little neck, you know, physical therapy on right. my neck, and I was fine. Thank God my dad was Thank okay. God. No, you guys got lucky. Yeah, that's we got lucky. I know it's a crazy story, oh but it's true. What was one of the biggest challenges in making this movie and getting this movie made? Uh, the biggest challenge to Hail Mary was, I guess, the logistics of it because it's. It, it's it's sort of a ferocious little movie because we're just on the road going from like place to place in Mexico City all over, and you know you're you're. We were only on stage for like a week and a half or something out of like seven weeks. We were some different locations all the time, and sometimes it was like almost up to two hours away. So that comes out of your shooting time, yeah. you know, round That's, trip, yeah, and it's like door line. to yeah. door. Yeah. So it's like, oh my God, I got three scenes to shoot in seven and a half hours. Let's go! Like, you so be light, it was quick on your feet. Very light. Very. I'm grateful for all my experience because I don't think it would have happened. And the crew that I had again. I mean, I cannot speak enough for how beautiful Mexican people are, and the crews and how hard we all worked so hard every day. But we worked together hard, yeah. and it was beautiful. And so and now you've got a lot to be proud of together. We do, I we do. I can't wait to have a cast and crew screening in Mexico to get everybody here. But you know, the we got five, we got we got Benny here. The, Benny's all here. That's good. The five will be awesome. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Chat GPT and the potential effects of that on screenwriting and screenwriters? You know, I I there's something to be said to me about the process mm -hmm. of creating which involves many things. It involves making trips to the museum. It involves stepping back when you need to. It involves, you know, speaking with other people. It involves it's bad writing. It involves bad writing. Yeah, yeah. You have to get some bad shit down before you yep. can get it right. Lots of bad shit. So, and it involves notes, people reading and giving you notes. So there's a whole process. When, you know, again, 20 years ago, we were, not, we were cutting on an Avid, but before that, when I was younger and coming up, we cut film mm -hmm. on like a machine. Yeah, yeah, cut no, film. Like It was like film. a whole process. Yeah. So when you had to make a cut, you had to think about that cut. Mm -hmm. And you had to, because it took time and yeah. you just didn't do it. And so there's something to be said about the quality of films before versus the quality now. And I think because the process is, is, is diminished. Right. And with the process diminished, the universe doesn't quite have the time and we don't give ourselves the sort of groundedness to like really let that creativity yeah. come and the excellence come, I think. No, that's just me. That's what I think. So I feel like there's sort of, you know, it's almost like, um, like soy, all of a sudden everything was soy. So now all of a sudden everything's like, oh, you know, AI. And so it's like, wait a minute, like let's just step back and see before we just dive in and think that's the road to go. Right. Because I'm sure there's like a lot of benefits, but let's not lose ourselves yeah. and what we're born with. Let's figure out how to enhance what we're born with rather than dive in and replace. No, it definitely, Does that make sense? It definitely needs stewardship. Like, it can't just be set. It would be very dry and fine. It can only draw on what it knows. And that's based on, I think, I was at a conference and they just said, like, only 39,000, there's only ever been 39,000, I think, TV shows in the sort of history of time. And it can only draw on all of that. Now, a lot of writers do draw on past movies and TV yes. shows for experience. I definitely did. But... It, it is interesting that it is limited as it is at the moment. I think at best, it could potentially improve efficacy or if you're having a little bit of writer's block. But at worst, you know, it would be very sad to kind of diminish the human experience that goes into, you know, artistry and screenwriting. And if you have writer's block, then you step back. Yeah. Then go to a museum, go yeah. watch a movie, go do, like, go do, free yourself. Meditate. Don't just try to get it done right. by using a shortcut. Right, right, right. Because I think you're just selling yourself short. Yeah, I agree. So it's a tricky thing. But just to say that I really think that Nate Lee, who wrote Hail Mary, mm -hmm. one of the things you say that I like about it or that drew me to it, it's completely different. It is a story 
But it's wacky, man. It is the most unusual movie. Yeah. And I'm like, how could even somebody come up with something so different today? And that's where it could not, ChatGPT cannot replicate something Exactly. Like that. Exactly. So I think he did a great job. And yeah, so I have mixed feelings about it all. Yeah. But I'm very much about embracing more yeah. tools. Lots of uncertainty, but in the moment, in this moment, congrats on your movie. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. sharing your festival experience with Thank us. Thank you so much. It's been such much. a pleasure to sit down and talk to you. It's been awesome. You. I'm so excited.